Okay, so coming to the next talk. The second talk of this session is uh, the first on side channel attacks. It's called Higher Order Side Channel Security and Mask Refreshing. It's a joint work by John Sebastian Coron, Emmanuel Proof, Mathieu Rivon, and Thomas Walsh. And Thomas is giving the talk. side channel analysis and um, more specifically about uh, a higher order side channel function measure that has been proposed by uh, Rivan and Proof in 2010 and uh, we will show a weakness in the construction and uh, we will patch it. <coughs> At the end of the talk um, I will derive some uh, Properties that we want to see in, a, in an S box for an efficient, for efficiently uh, secure them against such an analysis. So a little bit of history. Such an analysis was uh, introduced almost 20 years ago already, and uh, since then a lot of attacks have been proposed in the literature. So basically, the, the idea of sectional analysis is to use not only the input of and output of a crypto primitive, but for also some information that you can have through a side channel. So by observing the device running a crypto primitive, you can gain information about its internal state and gain break the cipher more easily than classical crypto analysis. So we will uh, mostly talk about higher, higher order side channel analysis, meaning that we will um, consider that the attacker is able to observe several inter internal states in the, during the cryptographic uh, execution. While the main countermeasures against side channel analysis are the masking technique, shuffling and whitening. We will talk about masking here, which is certainly the most secure way to, to counteract sectional analysis, but still pretty expensive in practice. Shuffling and whitening are um, cheaper techniques, but don't enjoy security proof as masking technique. Shuffling is randomizing the instructions and, um, and whitening is adding some noise to the side channel measurements. So what are side uh, masking or sharing measures? The ba basic idea is instead of manipulating the intermediate variable of a cipher, we will manipulate them through a sharing of them, a secret sharing, sharing of them, and uh, that way have a manipulation that is independent from the secret. Well, uh, what's nice about uh, this uh, masking technique is when an um, intermediate variable is ma manipulated through D shares, observing the D shares in order to break the cipher, in order to gain information about the secret, cost have a complexity that is exponential in the um, in the order, in the number of shares. Well, with respect to sigma, sigma will be the um, standard deviation of the noise, of the measurement noise in my talk. Well, and um, masking control measure have security proofs that are done into the probing adversary model that I will define here. So, a deep probing adversary is able to observe the intermediate variable without considering any noise. And uh, if a countermeasure is secure against such adversaries, then 
a real adversary needs at least to observe t plus one intermediate variables in order to attack. So there have been some proposition of quantum measures that can be proven, and uh, recently uh, some of these quantum measures uh, can be applied for any order d, so any number of shares. So more formally, what is a higher order masking scheme? It's a transformation of the cipher capital epsilon here that transform it to, to a new cipher epsilon prime that take a, a, a sharing of its inputs and output the sharing of the output cipher such that any family of the intermediate variable is independent of the cipher. Well, usually the um, sharing or the encoding of the variable is done used uh, based on a linear encoding uh, with respect to the field, to the cipher field, final field. So the linear, in the linear transformation of the cipher are usually easy to mask, to handle through this encoding, but the non-linear parts of the S boxes are hard to handle through the encoding. So this is the main focus of our job. So how do we mask the S box to the higher order? So this original work from Ishai Ishai and Wagner in 2003 at Crypto. And uh, well, the main idea is to write the S box as a polynomial function. And uh, so divide it into um, elementary operation in the field, like in F2 for the original paper, but it has been extended to any field by like Ivan Proof in 2010. And then process each of these elementary <coughs> operations one after the other. The sharing that we use is a bitwise addition, meaning that the shares of a variable X absorb together give the variable x and um, and well each of them is independent of the secret. So for the linear transformation uh, the handling is easy I had just said. We just have to apply the linear transformation to each of the shares individually and then we get the output that is the share of the real output of the function. So the nonlinear part though, so the multiplication in the field actually then uh, we will have to design a specific algorithm. So this is what has been done in 2003. So let's consider um, two inputs A and B that are shared. And we want to, uh, to find the output C, that is a product of A and B, and uh, in a shared manner. So I'll give a next, uh, yeah. So we can see that to compute this Output we have actually to, to, to compute each of the product of, of the different shares of A and B. And I give an example for T, D equals 2. So all the different products are here in this matrix form. And uh, while well, the algorithm design, the ISW algorithm follows this different step. So we first add some of the um, of this uh, share product of shares. And uh, in order to do this computation here, that are actually dependent to two shares of the same variable and then introduce a weakness in the, in the operation should not be manipulated as such. We will need to have some random values. So these three fresh random values here um, that we, we add here to in order to annual them. And here it goes. We have here each of the intermediate variables that will be computed by our secure multiplication in such a way that if we follow the brat bracket in order to do the operation in the right order, then we have all the manipulation are secured to the this order. At the end, we have, we have the output shares the output shares of the, um, of the multiplication, the three shares of C. 
So this algorithm has been proven to be secure to the this d over 2 uh, order and uh, extended to the d order by given Hoof in 2010. So how do we use such algorithm in order to secure the AES? So to secure the S box of the AES. The nonlinear part of the AES is a power function, <coughs> the inverse function in the field of 256 elements. Uh, it can be written as a, the exponentiation to the power 254. So first, we divide the exponentiation in multiplication and squarings. The squarings are linear operation in the field, so we will do them straightforwardly. Multiplication, though, are more complicated. We will use the scheme, the scheme that we just saw. Well. Um, what is easy to see right now is that when we have a, um, a, an S-box written in a polynomial form, we want to reduce as much as possible the number of multiplication and, uh, and increase the number of squaring respectively because they are much more efficient to do squares. Revine proof show that um, the exponentiation to the power 254 could be done using only four multiplication, and this was uh, this is optimal. Well, the <coughs> overall algorithm looks like this. That computes uh, the full uh, S box, the full the nonlinear part of the S box. We have the four multiplication here, the second multiplication. We have some squarings or power to the um, two to the power j which are linear operation, and we also have some refresh mask operations. These operations are needed for one reason, is that the secure multiplication needs to have independent shares as input. The first input and the second input must have independent shares. And if there was no refresh mask, then the shares wouldn't be independent anymore, and then the security would, wouldn't hold. Well, what I've been uh, proposed by Rivain Proof is to use this very simple refresh mask function. Well, well from, a, from a shared variable, Z, uh, we want new shares, Z, Z prime. Well, uh, we just have to loop over all the shares, add a new random to each share, and accumulate the, the new randomness to Z0, for instance. That way we keep the shares equal to Z and, and, and we have a, a new mask, new, new shares. Well, this is from this, actually this is the, the origin of the flow that we will see right now. We will consider the first three operations in our exponentiation which is a squaring, a refresh mask, and a secure multiplication. Uh, in fact, what we, what we show in our paper is that um, if we combine some internal value of the refresh mask with some internal value of the secure multiplication, then we can create something that is dependent on the secret, and we don't need as much as d plus 1 intermediate values. So uh, uh, we'll try to show that. So if we look at the d over 2's iteration of the loop we just saw of the refresh mask will have the z0 that, looks, that is the sum of z, the sensitive variable, the sum of half of the, of the new shares of z, and the sum of the second half of the old shares. And uh, well, in fact, by definition, the old shares are the square of, the, of the, the shares of the initial value x and. Uh, now if we look at the, at the secure multiplication, uh, we, we have seen already that it will handle all the product of the different shares of its input, so somehow it will manipulate this um, intermediate values. This is the product of the shares of the i of z and the product of the shares 
and the shares of x. So what, what we have, if we, uh, if we gather all this information, we have something, we have d over 2 intermediate values here, plus 1 intermediate value here from the refresh mass. If we gather all them all together, then we have something that is dependent to the secret, and there is only d over 2 plus 1 intermediate values. So we have something that breaks the disorder security. So, how, how can we um, overcome this issue? Uh, well, one way would be to use a much more complicated refresh mask. And uh, we believe that this would hold um, higher security and avoid this, this problem of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of higher order attack. However, however it's pretty hard to prove and also it's very expensive because we add this expensive security application here. So we go we went another way. Instead of replacing the refresh mask, we will actually gather to get, take together the three operations here and make one simple operation which is actually this function H that is a product of X by X to the power two two J. So how how we do that? Uh, we first write the, the output of this function h as a combination of the different input shares, and we come up with the application of h to the different shares plus the application of this function f to to uh, each pair of shares. This function f is uh, actually a bilinear function and has the nice property of being that we can read them, write them as the sum of application of h. And uh, what is this interesting? This is interesting because we will, we, we will be able to do the secure computation of h only using the function h and without using any multi multiplication in the field. So we can tabulate this function in memory, and then apply very um, well, in an efficient way when the multiplication in the field can be costly. So a brief look of the uh, securization of the function H. So we have a shared input A. All this as a different this is the different values that we have to evaluate in order to, to, to compute our output C. We will follow the same path as for ISW scheme here. And we want to secure this operation here. So we have seen that they can be written like this. So we will add a random death for that. And well, we will need a little bit more work than before, so we will go into this function f. So we have seen that they can be written as the sum of, of h function. And uh, we need to uh, secure this operation. And we will do that adding a new randomness again. So we will need more randomness, but on the other hand, we only have to use this function h that can be evaluated efficiently. So, and finally, we have the output shares of our operation. The security can be proven to the disorder. disorder. So, this is what we do in the paper. And uh, what we get, finally, the whole exponentiation to the power 254 look like this, uh, with uh, two secure H function and, uh, and two product, two secure multiplication with three uh, square rings. So we, we can show that, well, on standard platform, it's, much, it's, 
it is more efficient than the, the old version, the revamped version, and also uh, <coughs> more secure. So to conclude, um, we propose a, a security enhancement of the of the revamp proof masking scheme. But um, if we want to go a little bit further, we didn't have we don't have yet a global security of this scheme. We need to uh, to um, to take all the um, cipher implementation into account. Or, or we only have some part of it. Each part of it is secure, but we have to show that the composition of each of them is also secure. On the efficiency, uh, we, we, we found out some way to, to, to compute the AES, the secure AES, the secure S-Box more efficiently. And uh, the question that we might ask is, can we do better? Can we have a better expression of the function x to the power, uh, to the power 254? A better expression would be where there, were, there is less multiplication and more squaring or h function. Well, this go also on a discussion of how to design a cipher nowadays. Maybe uh, if we can take into account such constraints, then we will have ciphers that are more efficient when dealing with such an attacks. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for the talk. Are there any questions? We have time for one or two questions. But I have a question. Uh, in the paper you say there's an absolute overhead of 600 bytes compared to the Rivon proof um, proposal. How much is the abs uh, I mean the relative overhead compared to that proposal? It's 600 by absolute, but how much is it? It, did, it didn't need. Um, it didn't need any ROM. The, the first, the first. Uh, I think the remote proof implementation did, didn't need any ROM. So we we are we are as costly. Well, the same cost in RAM, but in RAM I think. So that you don't need any. There was no pre-computation pre possible. Okay. Other okay. questions? If not, then let's thank the speaker again.